Hey guys, Tony here at Dirtfish. Uh, we just finished up installing a handbrake on a school car build that we're working on. Uh, so I figured I'd explain a few of the things that we're doing with it. Um, one of the most common questions I get when I'm in a school car with a student is, you know, what's, what's this? What is it? It's, well, it's a handbrake. Um, what does it do? It's used for locking up the rear wheels in a scenario where you need the car to make a tight turn or a tight corner and you're maybe coming in a little bit too fast or, or something like that. It'll help shed some speed and rotate the car. It's not used a whole lot, um, but it is a tool that sometimes is necessary uh, when you are racing. So handbrakes come in all different uh, shapes, sizes, forms. This is just a generic handbrake here. Um, it does have a cool feature that it has a locking uh, mechanism. So we could pull the handbrake back, it'll lock up the rear wheels and we could flip this lever down and it'll catch something and hold it back, almost like a parking brake. Uh, this is similar, just at a 45 degree angle. Um, they can also come horizontal, uh, completely this way. And then here's just another one that's a little bit taller, uh, wheel wood unit, like that. So let's talk about the difference between hydraulic handbrake and the handbrake or parking brake you have in your car. This basically uses the rear brake calipers and the rear normal brake pads to lock up the wheels, which is really efficient. In your regular day-to-day -day car, um, the handbrake or emergency brake uses uh, shoes inside the brake rotor. Um, works good for day-to-day -day use, uh, but we would get that too hot in rally, and eventually the shoes would either melt, like the, the friction material on the shoes would melt, or they'd come out of adjustment. Um, the way those parking brakes work, they're used by springs and cables, so they, they lose tension over time, and then eventually they just won't work. So you'll go to pull the thing, and there'll be nothing there. And next thing you know, you're off the road or hitting a tree or something like that. Um, so way, the way we install these in the car is we, uh, we make a mount, we fabricate a mount, and then the handbrake gets bolted in, and then we have to run our own brake lines. So the brake lines come off the master cylinder for the rear circuit into the master cylinder for the handbrake, out the master cylinder for the handbrake, and then they split in two and they go to the rear brake calipers. Something that's not very common uh, over here where we are, but maybe where there's salty roads, um, salt and things like that on the roads and rusty cars, uh, is uh, bending and forming brake lines and then flaring, flaring the ends to fit. So um, there's a couple of to tools involved with making your own brake lines. Um, this is just a uh, tubing cutter here that will help cut, us, cut this to length. Um, a bender so we can uh, shape, shape our brake line. That way we, we don't want to bend it by hand because it'll kink. So we want to use this, this bender, it'll give it a nice, nice even radius. And then this is a flaring tool. This flaring tool is a, a more expensive model. There are some universal models that you can get at local parts stores that they don't make a perfect flare. So we like to use a, a, nice, a nice unit here that will give us a perfect flare. So the way this works is we'd start at the master cylinder and engine bay and we'd basically make, make bends on this brake line until we, until we got to the handbrake. So I'm just gonna sh make a bend here to show you what's going on. And we'll make a, cra we'll make a crazy brake line here. Okay, now let's imagine we are at our handbrake now. So now we need to flare this. The first thing is we need to know what kind of flare we need to make. There's all kinds. There's bubble flares, there's inverted bubble flares, there's AN fittings, there's NPT fittings. In this case, we're using an inverted bubble flare. Uh, most manufacturers on cars are using an inver inverted bubble flare, so that is what we are going to use. Um, so we would cut our brake line to length. I'm going to cut it a little shorter just to show you an example. So this cutter just has a little blade in there tightens on, this knob tightens the blade to the, to the brake line and then you just spin it around. And you tighten it up a little bit, keep spinning. Tighten it up, keep spinning. So that cuts that. I take a little razor blade and I kind of clean the, the burrs off of this, this edge here so we got a nice smooth uh, surface to work with. Now we're going to get our flaring tool out along with the correct dies and pieces that make a the correct flare we need. The 
brake line goes into the die and the tool tightens up around the brake line. So I'll show you here, we got the brake line kind of flush with this edge here. And now we're gonna insert our die. This is a two step process. This is the first die. So this die actually goes inside the brake line. And then we'll use the hydraulic portion of this to pump. Open it up. And as you can see, that kind of bubbles the brake line. It will make a, basically a big, big bubble. Now we need to add the cone here. That will give it the flare that will make the correct sealing surface um, to this uh, T-joint here that we're trying to connect to. So again, tighten it up. Pump with the hydraulics. And then now we have a perfect inverted bubble flare. And this flare matches this T fitting. So that's kind of the, the gist and basis on, on how to make a brake line. Um, so you'd have to navigate the whole car uh, with the brake lines. Um, I like to make these little dies right here. These are just uh, like a 45 and a 90 degree bend. Um, the way I do this is I use my bender and I make a 90 degree bend, but then I mark right here with Sharpie. I then take these into the car when I'm building a brake line and let's say I wanted to then have a, the, let's say I wanted this brake line to go around this T right here. I would then put a Sharpie mark right there and I would line that Sharpie mark up with uh, the edge of my bender here and make the bend. So this, uh, this is a hard line. There's also a uh, soft line, which is good uh, in the corners of, of the, like near the wheels going to the brake calipers. So it's flexible. You know, you can uh, mount it around your strut or your damper when your wheel moves left and right. This, this will also allow for the travel of that. Um, so, to make an AN line, it's a little more complex and there's all kinds of fittings. <clears throat> we could just do an AN straight here and then adapt a banjo to it, screw a banjo in, or they make uh, banjos that have a seal and olive fittings that would basically go onto this hose, crimp on and tighten up and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's very important to know uh, what flare and what you need um, on the handbrake, on the master cylinder, on your brake calipers. You need to map everything out uh, before you start building and ordering parts. Um, that way you know the thread pitch of everything, the flare pitch, and uh, you're not ordering uh, incorrect parts um, and things like that. So now that uh, we got our handbrake installed in the school car, it's time to go out and hit the track and, and see if it works. Thanks for watching today. Uh, comment below if you have any questions and make sure to uh, like and subscribe.